Hello! Welcome to the Nova Guide for the Lost Vikings. Use the menu to the left to jump to any part of the video that you'd like, or just sit tight and try not to get lost! One of the first games ever made by the developers that would become Blizzard, The Lost Vikings debuted way back in 1992 as a puzzle platformer. Abducted from their homes by the evil Tomator, Eric, Olaf, and Balog are thrown through space and time while trying to return to their homes and family. The trio show up again in 1997's The Lost Vikings 2, joined by a wolf named Fang and a dragon named Scorchy. For the last 17 years, the trio has only been seen hanging out in Azeroth until their debut in Heroes of the Storm. A specialist, the Lost Vikings are distinct in that the three Vikings can be controlled separately. Individually, the Vikings are frail and don't pack much of a punch. Players hoping to use these heroes to their fullest will need to practice quickly switching between tasks and maintaining map awareness. Played to their full potential, the Vikings are capable of getting their team a huge early experience advantage and transition extremely well into a late game force. You'll notice right away that the Vikings don't start with any usable abilities, so let's go over their passives first. Fast Restart reduces the amount of time any Viking remains dead by 25%. The Lost Vikings can't mount. Instead, Z is an ability called Go Go Go, causing all three Vikings to gain a 40% movement speed buff for 4 seconds. Olaf has a short range charge with an 8 second cooldown. If he doesn't take damage for 4 seconds, Olaf gains a huge amount of health regen, refilling his entire health bar in a matter of seconds. Olaf is the most durable Viking, but he has a melee attack and is the slowest of the Vikings, actually moving slower than other heroes. Balog's attacks deal splash damage to targets behind his main target. Despite wielding a sword, he actually throws them as a ranged attack. <laughs> what? And has an average movement speed. Eric is the fastest of the Vikings and has the longest range on his attacks, but he's also the most fragile. The Lost Vikings can gain active abilities through their talents. Q is spin to win. The Vikings will each spin on the spot, dealing damage in a circle. W is jump, causing them to float in the air and become invulnerable for 1.5 seconds. And E is Norse force. Each Viking gains a shield. The shield is stronger for each living Viking and lasts up to 7 seconds. For this guide, we're going to be using this talent build, selecting all of the Vikings' active abilities. They address a lot of the shortcomings for the Vikings, adding survivability, maneuverability, and a bit of extra burst damage. Each of these talents also adds to all three Vikings separately and as a whole, as opposed to just benefiting one. We select Viking Horde at level 1. Since the Vikings are able to be in every lane, they're in a great position to get a ton of health globes. The region can come in handy in drawn out fights, but I prefer this simply because I don't have to hearth back to base when my Vikings are low, since it takes them a long time to get back into the action. We also take Impatience as a Virtue at level 13 to complement our active abilities. For their heroic ability, the Vikings can choose Longboat Raid or play again. Longboat Raid requires any living Vikings to be close together, at which point they'll hop into a magically flying boat. The boat has its own health bar independent of the Vikings, and gains health based on how many Vikings joined in. The Longboat deals massive damage, firing randomly at enemies nearby. You gain access to Mortar with Q, but it takes a long time to land. Upgraded at 20, the Longboat will attack two targets at once and gain double the range on Q. Alternatively, Play Again will revive and summon all lost Vikings to a location. Upgraded, this effect happens again 10 seconds later. Longboat Raid is definitely the better of the two heroic abilities right now. This ability alone can secure late game objectives and team fights. Also take the upgrade at level 20. Let's first talk about how to control the Vikings since there are three of them and it takes some getting used to. You can use the number keys to select individual Vikings, with the four keys selecting all three. Hitting the number twice will jump to that Viking. You can click each Viking individually, and you can also click and drag the mouse cursor to select any number of Vikings that you want. It's also helpful to keep in mind that you can direct the movement of your selected hero by right clicking on the minimap. This is useful when you don't need too much precision. At level 1, the typical strategy for the Vikings is to send one to each lane. 
This is useful for collecting health globes throughout the early game. This also lets each viking soak, or gather experience from every lane. It's important to note though that the huge numbers you see when you hit tab can be a bit misleading. Unless the vikings are alone in lane, you're not actually getting any additional experience by splitting up your vikings. In fact, if you decided not to take the viking horde talent and there's already at least one person in each lane, there's little benefit to splitting up your vikings at all. If you did split them up, this is going to be the most trying part of the game. Keep a close eye on your minimap and frequently cycle through the vikings by using the number keys. You will be alerted on the minimap if one of your vikings gets attacked off screen. Focus on taking out the mage in each minion wave to gain a health globe. You can queue up movement commands by holding down the shift key and clicking the ground. Doing so can give the illusion in lane that you're still controlling the viking even when you're actually paying attention elsewhere. Or you can just leave your vikings in a bush near enough to collect experience. Outside of XP soaking and collecting health globes, the vikings won't have a large impact on the early parts of the game. Don't worry too much if a viking is killed at this point. Early game kills offer a low amount of experience in general, and even less so for any individual viking. Each kill only counts as one fourth of a kill. When the first objective appears, you're going to have to make a crucial call. At this point in the game, you probably have no active abilities on your vikings, no damage outside of auto attacks, and only go 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 to reposition quickly or escape. Eric and Balog are very fragile at this point and can be picked off quickly if caught out of position. Olaf is a bit more durable, but with his low movement speed and low damage melee attack, it's very likely he'll die before accomplishing anything of use. But, you can decide to ignore the first objective and keep each viking in a separate lane. This has the benefit of potentially getting a large amount of experience for your team and, if uncontested, will cause the enemy team to lose a large amount in return. If anyone on the enemy team decides to stay and push against your viking, the enemy team loses one teammate for one third of yours. Of course, this varies by map. On the Haunted Mines, you can leave one viking in each of the two lanes and send the third to collect skulls in the mine. Balog is the prime candidate for the mine since he's the only viking with AoE capability before spin to win. He has a bit more survivability than Eric and isn't nearly as slow as Olaf. Or, it might be in your team's best interest to send all three into the mines. If you decide to do this, I recommend not splitting up your vikings. They'll be able to clear much faster together, and they're less likely to be quickly killed by enemies. On Blackheart's Bay, try to request a solo position at top, and encourage your team to split the remaining four members between mid and bot lane. In particular, leave Olaf top, and only worry about soaking experience, even if you have to do so from behind a wall. Try to help your team as best as you can when it's time to fight over the chests. If there's any other option, I do not recommend picking up the coins with Eric or Balog. They're both very vulnerable when turning in and there's a good chance they'll end up dropping the coins. On Sky Temple, request a solo lane bot, again with Olaf. Use the other two vikings to help capture the temples. If a temple is secure, go back to lane instead of helping with any additional fighting. The vikings still have low damage at this point and the enemies are split up, making even Balog less useful than usual. On Dragonshire, try to send Olaf mid. Help it top and bot to capture the shrines, but otherwise maintain your positions in separate lanes. The vikings really shine here, since you can capture the dragon knight with one of them and still control the other two. Capture the dragon knight using Olaf and focus on taking out some structures as usual. Leave Eric and Balog in their own lanes, hopefully unopposed while the enemy team tries to deal with the dragon knight. On Garden of Terror, it might be worth sacrificing a viking to steal some seeds from the enemies. You're worth a low amount of experience and you'll resurrect quickly, so don't be too hesitant to dive in there if you think you can get something out of it. Or ignore the objectives and just push your lanes. When it's time to take the terror, return to base with Olaf and generally follow the same strategy as the Dragon Knight. On Cursed Hollow, I absolutely suggest ignoring the objectives. Stay in lane and get your team experience. The longer your team can stall the first objective, the farther ahead you can push the experience advantage. Encourage your team to stall and poke and keep the enemies out of lane for as long as possible. At this point, you should be at or near level 10, and your overall goal should shift from making sure to stay apart and collect experience, to grouping up, securing merc camps, and winning team fights. There's no alternatives now, so make sure you're at every objective from this point on. If you haven't reached level 10, I suggest remaining in separate lanes until you're ready to select your heroic ability. Teamfights are where our active abilities and longboat raid really shine. The lost vikings can approach a fight from a number of ways. Dive in for the damage on the enemy team using jump. 
with all three Vikings securely in position around the enemy, spin to win. Whenever you notice a Viking starting to take damage, use Norse Force while you auto attack your target. If they start to slip out of your reach, you can use Go 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 to stay on top of them. I preferred not to open with Longboat Raid because I don't have a lot of control over who it focuses. It's also better to use your abilities and take damage beforehand because your Vikings are actually regening health and getting their ability cooldowns back while they're in the boat. If you're behind, hold Olaf back and poke at a distance with Eric and Balog. Reposition to safety with Jump or Go Go Go. And finally use Norse Force when you've exhausted your escapes. If you have to, bring in Olaf to cover the escape of a party member or your other Vikings. Use Longboat Raid from the outskirts of a fight. Even when you're behind, the damage output from this ability is very significant. The Lost Vikings excel at taking mercenary camps, able to take them relatively quickly on their own, but also able to come away from them unscathed. Send in Olaf to take all the damage and position Balog so that the splash damage from the attacks are most useful. Capture the camp for a health globe and watch as Olaf quickly regenerates back to full health. Longboat Raid becomes essential to your team securing late game fights and objectives. With the level 20 talent, you'll want to make sure you use the ability as soon as possible and stay on the fringes. It's extremely important to get the entire duration out of the ability. Having your boat destroyed prematurely could cost you a fight. At this point, the Vikings are capable of taking any objective on the map, but be sure to keep an eye on your mini-map and don't take camps, temples, tribute, or turning coins if the enemy team is missing. Your priority at this point is to always be nearby or with your team to secure team fights. The Lost Vikings lack durability, crowd control, and have limited mobility. You'll want to make sure the rest of your team will be able to make up for these qualities. ETC is probably the best tank to lead the Vikings. Mosh Pit makes landing your longboat mortars a cinch, and Rockstar Aura gives you attack speed, a huge benefit for the almost entirely auto attack based Vikings. You'll need to be careful here since the Vikings add an extra 2 health bars for your healers to deal with. I suggest taking Brightwing. Her AoE healing isn't dependent on the number of health bars, and Polymorph and Pixie Dust can go a long way toward helping the Vikings keep up with their opponents. In turn, the Vikings provide extra points for Brightwing to phase shift to. Supports like Rhaegar and Tassadar, however, can keep Longbow Raid up amidst enemy focus. With the Vikings early game primarily focused on collecting experience from the lanes, you'll want to look for damage dealers who excel at the early game, potentially able to take or stall the first objective while the Vikings soak up experience in lane. You can also look for roamers able to take advantage of the Vikings holding every lane on their own. Zeratul is great to have around since he's able to roam the map freely with the Vikings holding the lanes. Again, we also want strong CC where we can get it, and Void Prison can be hugely helpful in holding enemies until the Vikings are in position. As previously mentioned, the Vikings are very fragile, and if they get locked down, they're likely to pop like balloons before the effect ends. The Vikings can't collect XP from a lane while they're dead. Admittedly, killing them early game is more of a speed bump than a hard stop, but heroes that can quickly dispatch them in lane can put a huge hamper on their early game. Longboat Raid and Norse Force also gain durability depending on how many Vikings are alive when used, so dispatching one quickly can severely weaken their ability to stay in a fight. Anyone who is able to jump on them and quickly tear apart the boat are also an effective means of ending their best team fight ability. The Lost Vikings excel at getting that lane experience, but the enemy team does have an option to counter that with a hero who has nearly as much presence as the Vikings. A well-played Abathur can nearly negate the Viking's lane presence, and can provide each lane with ranged poke to push back or even kill the Vikings. Thanks for watching our video guide on the Lost Vikings! Please make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter for channel updates. Let us know in the comments below what hero you want to guide for next.